Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, I welcome you sincerely to this week's uh, episode of Freedom Podcast. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. We give Him all the glory for His uh, past faithfulness, for His loving kindness, for His mercies. You know, uh, it's because He has preserved us. That's why we keep seeing week after week. We keep seeing weeks after weeks. Uh, it has been his faithfulness. It's not because we pray more than other people. It's not because we fast more than other people. But when God decides to show mercy, he shows it to I mean to the very, very full extent of it. He shows it fully. God doesn't show half mercy. So we are beneficiaries of his mercy. I will give him all the glory for that. Uh, Freedom Podcast, as you know, is the official weekly podcast of uh, Global Emancipation uh, Ministries. Uh, Calgary, Canada and um, in past episodes the Lord has revealed wonderful things to us he has uh, He has given us great revelation, he has taught us he has imparted us and um, I want to also appreciate uh, those of us who have been uh, communicating, getting back sharing our testimonies of how God has used this uh, podcast to bless us it's such a wonderful uh, it's such a wonderful blessing to know that God is actually using uh, this medium to reach out to us, to impart our lives. And we appreciate you for getting back in this regard. And we can only give him all the glory and pray that he will continue to impart our lives, to continue to do more. Uh, may his name forever be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, this particular week, the Lord has decided to uh, visit us again with yet additional revelation of his word. Uh, he has decided to impart us afresh. He has decided to give us something that if we can apply it, we transform our lives and take us from the level we currently operating to higher levels of glory. And by the time this episode is over, you will understand what I'm talking about. Uh, that's why today we'll be looking at a very important topic. And the topic is engaging the covenant of divine partnership. Engaging the covenant of divine partnership partnership we'll be taking our text from first thessalonians chapter 5 we we'll look at verse 24 our text to be from first thessalonians 5 24 but before we continue uh, let's take a short word of prayer let us pray our father and our god we thank you because you are a good god we appreciate your holy name for your mercy thank you so much for your kindness you know your word says your mercy they are new every morning your compassion they fail not the implication of that is the mercy we enjoy on monday is different from the one on tuesday the one on tuesday is different from the one on wednesday your mercies are new every morning we thank you for supplying us new mercies wonderful mercies daily mercies we give you all the glory for this lord be exalted in the name of jesus i thank you for my listeners thank you for how you have imparted their lives thank you so much for the testimonies we have received already concerning how you are working mightily in the lives of these ones so thank you and we appreciate you and we believe that what you have done in this this lives will remain permanent in the name of jesus and we pray that this particular week also you will give us a fresh revelation in your word and you still cause our lives to be imparted by it. We pray that you will give us understanding and you will give us uh, ability to grasp the mysteries in your word in the mighty name of Jesus. By the time this session is over, take all the glory and let all the blessings be ours. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So, once again, um, you're welcome to this week's uh, episode of uh, Freedom Podcast. And like I said earlier, before we prayed, we're going to be looking at engaging the covenant of uh, divine partnership. And um, our text, as I said earlier, is First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-four. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-four. And I read from Authorized King James Version. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. That calls for meditation. I take it again. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Engaging 
the covenant of divine partnership you know anyway for before we go deeper into the into the um, teaching itself for some of us who may not know what covenant is covenant is simply an agreement of commitment between two or more people it's like two or more people coming together to have an agreement concerning certain commitments and when we say divine partnership it means among i mean god is a party and man is also a party so when you call it you call it divine partnership it means an agreement of commitment between divinity and humanity so an agreement of commitment between god and man and that man can be you that man can be any man so that's where we're looking at engaging the covenant of divine partnership we're going to be looking at some case studies as we proceed to see those who worked in that kind of uh, covenant partnership the results what transpired what they were able to do uh, with that particular covenant and um, how their lives turned out then we'll now be able to look at how we in our generation can actually sign up for this uh, wonderful partnership and that's why we encourage you to pay rapt attention as we look into the word of god now you see it's no longer news that god still reigns over the affairs of men on this planet god still reigns Psalm 24 verse 1, Psalm 24 verse 1, the Lord, the Bible says the head is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. By implication it means everything that you see on this planet, they are, they are all traceable to God. The earth itself is the Lord's. The Lord is the one who created this planet and everything you can see or maybe you cannot even see whatever you can see or not see everything present on this earth including human beings including you including me including everyone on earth they all belong to the lord psalm 24 verse 1 confirms confirms that okay but there's something about god if you look at john 4 24 john 4 24 god is a spirit and one major characteristic of a spirit is being invisible when you say somebody's a spirit, it means you cannot see the person with your naked eyes. A, a spirit is not material. It's not somebody. It's not something you can touch. Okay, God is a spirit, according to John four twenty four. Even though He's the one in charge of the entire planet Earth and everything that goes on here, all the nations, all the economy, everything, God is in full control. You know, the heavens of the heavens are the laws and he has made the head his full stool. God looks at everything happening here and he has full control over this particular planet. He changes times and seasons. He determines when it's winter. He determines when it's summer. He is the Lord of all the earth. But being a spirit, like I said, he sometimes often requires human hands to carry out his operations on earth. That's where man comes in. Okay. He is a spirit. He has some operations to carry out on this planet. So, most times, he requires humanity to carry out his operations on earth. So, whatever he has called you to do, like that text we read, uh, faithful is he that call it to you, also we do it. Whatever the Lord has called you to do, whatever assignment he has given you, whatever he tells you to do, he is still the one who will do it. He's only going to do it through you. That's the way it works. God doesn't tell you to do something that he himself is not planning to do. It doesn't work like that. If God tells you do something, he is actually the one who wants to do it. He only needs a human hand through which he can do it. That is where this partnership thing is coming in. Now, don't get me wrong before we dive deeper. God cannot be held ransom. You can't say, uh, I'm not doing. And God will now say, oh, then I'm incapacitated. Never. God will never be incapacitated. In fact, there was a time, you know, some people were shouting, Hosanna, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the, on the court. And uh, some people were saying, hey, Jesus asked these people to shut up. Why are all these people shouting, Hosanna? Why are they making noise? Jesus said, if you ask them to shut up, my father will raise up stones. And stones will cry, Hosanna. And Jesus wasn't a comedian. He meant it. He meant it. Why do you think the devil used the temptation against, I mean, for Jesus in Matthew chapter 4? Why did you 
think that the devil told Jesus to convert stone to bread because he knew he could do it. <laughs> he knew Jesus could do it. That was why it was a temptation. He knew Jesus had the capacity, he had the power to turn stones to bread. He only wanted him to use his power for selfish interests. That's where the temptation comes in. Not that Jesus couldn't. If Jesus couldn't convert stone to bread, it wouldn't have been called a temptation. That's the way it is. So, don't say because uh, God needs man, then I'm not going to be available. No, he's not going to find any man, then his work will not be done on earth. It's not possible. Don't forget the earth is the laws, including the mineral resources, natural resources, everything, stones, animals, plants, everything belongs to him. If you don't believe me, read the entire book of Jonah. You will see the way he displayed his control over humanity. I mean, over plants, over all organisms. He used plants, he used animals. He sent a whale. He sent a whale to swallow Jonah and he commanded the whale to go and vomit Jonah at the entrance of the city where he sent him to God, instructing whales and the whale carrying out the instruction. That is the Lord I'm talking about. If you also don't believe me, he sent bird. It sent birds to go and feed Elijah. Elijah every day. The Bible says that bird kept bringing food to Elijah every day. That bird did not stop. The bird will fly and deliver Elijah's food to him on daily basis. He needed to talk to one of his prophets. He opened the mouth of a donkey, and the donkey spoke the language of a man that even the prophet could understand what he was saying. You know that is the God I'm talking about. So, before we begin to look at this partnership, don't see yourself as, hey, I can hold God, I can hold him ransom. If he asks me to do something and I don't do it, uh, he's going to be incapacitated, not at all. That's why it's a popular prayer in the Christian palace that what? God should not replace you with stones. If you go to some churches, they sing it, they pray. there's a prayer point that God, don't substitute me, don't use stones to replace me because if you will not do what he wants you to do, he has the power to raise birds, donkeys, whales, animals, stones to do what he wants to do. He is the Lord. So in this partnership, you know, there's always the senior partner, there's always the junior partner. You know, we call it agreement between agreement of commitment between two people. So, because it's divine partnership, God is definitely the senior partner. Why we are surely the junior partners. So, the instruction doesn't come from us to Him. The terms, the terms of the partnership, the terms of the covenant, usually and always comes from him to us because he is the senior partner why we are just the junior partners we are the privileged junior partners we are we are so fortunate that he's not he's not calling on stones to do his work he's using us to do his work so we need to understand our part that is very very important so like i said from that text whatever he has called you to do is the one who really wants to do it and is the one who will still do it he only wants to do it through you you are just a channel that is all let's look at some case studies to substantiate this fact if you look at the case of moses we read exodus chapter 14 exodus chapter 14 And I will read some verses to you. Exodus chapter 14. I will read verse 15. I will read 16. I will read 21. And I will read 26 and 27. So Exodus 14, 15, verse 15, verse 16, verse 21, verse 26, and verse 27. Now, I pick verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Now, you know the story they were about i mean the children of israel have actually been liberated from the land of egypt now they were traveling and they after some time the host of egyptian caught up i mean they were almost caught catching up with them and uh, they were going they saw the red sea ahead so the red sea represented the barrier they didn't know what they were going to do no ship no nothing nothing to cross them over no bridge okay and they cried to the lord and the lord said in this verse 15 i just read why are you crying to me speak that was talking to moses speak unto the children of israel that they go forward now verse 16 but lift 
thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea did you see that verse 21 and Moses not God Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided 26 and the Lord said unto Moses stretch out thy hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians and up, I mean upon their chariots and upon their horsemen 27 and Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea did somebody see that look at the way the covenant of divine partnership was just playing out <laughs> Red Sea needed to be divided only one person has the power to divide it the one who made it the Almighty God He's the only one who knew that there's highway right on the belly of the sea. Moses knew nothing. Now, God wanted to divide the Red Sea, but he needed a human hand. And he instructed, look at that verse 21. He told Moses to lift up his rod and stretch it over the sea that he wants to divide. God wants to divide. He needed Moses' rod to go up for him to divide it. How did it play out? Look at that verse 21 again. Moses did the stretching of the hand moses stretched forth his own hand and his rod over the sea and the lord look at that 21 very well the lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and the lord made the sea dry land and the waters were divided did you see that moses had no power over the east wind it was god who caused the east wind to blow all night it was God who made the sea dry land. It was the Lord who caused the waters to be divided. Faithful is he that called thee, who also will do it. He wanted Moses to just lift up his rod. That was all he wanted to do. He wanted to part the rest, but he needed to part it through Moses. So the senior partner did most of the work. All the junior partner had to do was just to lift up his tiny hands over the Red Sea. You see what I'm talking about? He needed the hands of Moses to part the Red Sea. And don't forget, before they even got to the Red Sea, there was, he used the mouth. It was the mouth of Moses that he used to demand the release of the Israelites from Pharaoh. He would tell Moses, go and stand before Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. Underline my, let my people go. He didn't say, Moses, uh, go and tell them to, you know. Moses didn't go there. He didn't go to meet uh, Pharaoh and said, hey, Pharaoh, uh, God said you should let his people go. No, it's not a reported speech. It's not, he said you should let his people. Moses opened his mouth. He opened his mouth and the Lord spoke to him, let my people go. That's exactly the way he did. And eventually, Pharaoh had no option than to release them. My people. God said, my people. And that was coming through the mouth of Moses. Covenant of divine partnership. You open your mouth. Psalm 81 verse, verse 10. If you look at Psalm 81 verse 10, he said, open your mouth and I will feel it. That's what he did for Moses. You just, all your job is open that your mouth. Forget about what you are going to say. It's not your job. All I need is open that mouth, engage your vocal cord. I will put words there. That's what he did. Engaging the covenant of divine partnership. Now, maybe I should ask you, do you think Moses in his right mind could have ever a right mind would have ever believed that the rod he has been carrying about was actually a snake? <laughs> How? How would he ever believe? God told him, go to Pharaoh's palace let that rod be cast down cast the rod down and the rod will become a serpent and that's what happened he threw the rod down and the rod became a serpent now it the power to make to convert the rod to serpent wasn't moses moses didn't have such capacity rod is rod snake is snake that's all moses knew but god wanted to convert a rod to a snake to demonstrate and prove some fact to pharaoh that he is god 
not Pharaoh, okay? And it's all he needed Moses to do. It just let that rod just be cast down. And they threw the rod on the ground and the rod became a snake. You remember the story? Egyptians, they threw their own down too and their own too became snake. And the rod that Moses threw down swallowed every other rod. The, the Egyptians were rodless. They went back home without rod. You see, but when it comes to divine partnership, honestly speaking, is one of the is 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 a very great privilege and the effort isn't much because you are, look at that text again he is the one who called you to come and do something and he's still the one who will do it all he needs is a vessel that's all you are just a vessel that is all he needs he doesn't need you to go to the gym he doesn't need you to do exercise he doesn't need you to flex your muzzle he does he doesn't need all your power or your ability he only all he needs is just you just do whatever i want i ask you to do i'm the lord i'm still the one who will do it let my people go but let that be said through your mouth you know one thing is this and i would like you to appreciate this particular fact what people call miracle you know what people say hey this is a miracle they are simply acts of god through men that is it the acts of God demonstrated through men are what people call a miracle. Rod becoming snake, that's miraculous. But Moses couldn't take any credit for it. His job was the simplest job alive. Throw it down. That's all. Red Sea divided. A eh? dry ground in the midst of Red Sea overnight. People, over 3 million people could travel inside the Red Sea. Water became wall to the left. Water became wall to the right. Wonderful miracle. It has never happened before. Wow, this is wonderful. Nobody has ever seen this before. Moses didn't have any credit over that because his job was the simplest. All he needed to do, raise up your hand over the sea. It was the Lord who caused the wind, east wind to come. He was the one who divided it. He's the one who caused the dry ground to appear. Moses' job was the simplest. If you understand the way covenant of divine partnership operates, your life will be so beautiful. You will live a stress-free life. No headache whatsoever. Because you just all you need to do is to stick to your job and it will stick to his faithful, is he that call it you who also will do it. I will, I will give you some additional um, additional case study examples. Look at Noah in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9 to 22. Genesis chapter 6, 9 to 22. God wanted to destroy the earth with the flood and he needed to secure some people. He needed to secure Noah and some animals. So he used the hand of Noah to secure living organisms in the ark. He gave Noah the dimension. He gave him the ability to build the ark. He told him what to use. He told him everything. And as a result of that, some of the organisms he wanted to keep they did not perish with the with the flood including noah and his own family he decided to start a new human race through noah all he needed noah to do was look at the this is the wood it's not noah who created the wood this is the tree you will get it's not noah who created the tree the dimension it was god who gave him everything god told him what to do he did it and human life was preserved look at joshua uh, joshua chapter 3 7 to 17 joshua chapter 3 7 to 17 Jordan was a river preventing the children of Israel from crossing over into their inheritance. And Jordan needed to divide. Apart from Red Sea, Jordan still needed to part. And how was God going to do it? He said the priests that were carrying the Ark of Covenant, they should just keep going on. They will keep going on to the Jordan. Jordan was overflowing. Don't worry. Just keep going on. And as soon as the steps, as soon as the feet of the priests carrying the Ark, as soon as their feet touches the Jordan River, Jordan we part that was what he told them so god wanted to part jordan so that his children can cross over into his inheritance but he needed the feet of the priest carrying the ark of the covenant he needed them to step into the water and as they did the water parted divine partnership your feet all you need is step in that's the simplest job alive no stress just step step in and the miraculous happened that is engaging the covenant of divine partnership now look at the servers the wine servers in john chapter 2 1 to 11 
the wine servers in John chapter 2, 1 to 11, you know, Jesus Christ has gone to the, has been invited to a wedding at Cana of Galilee. It's a popular story in the church. And the wine ran out and the mother came to Jesus. Hey, they have no more wine. Then we told this mother, it's not my time for miracles yet. Uh, this is not my time. Why are you asking me for wine? Then to call the long story short, the mother told the servers, I mean, the people who were in charge of the wine, whatever, don't leave Jesus. Whatever he tells you to do, just do it. And Jesus told them, okay, fill some pot with water. That was the instruction. Fill some pot with water. They were filling it. Fill this one. They filled it. Fill that one. They filled it. And they stood there watching. And he said, okay, have you filled it? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, get some cup. Take uh, some water out of that particular pot and take it to the governor of the feast. Yes, sir. And they took it. No prayer, nothing. He didn't do any sign. He didn't do any. He didn't wave any hand. He just said, have you filled it? Yes. Take some and take it to the MC." And they did it foolishly like that. They took water from the pot, took it to the MC, and the MC tasted it and said, wow, this is the best wine ever. Now, when did it become wine? Is it in the pot? Is it in the mouth of the MC? Is it along the road? We don't need the details. What matter is that <laughs> water was converted to wine. What was the job of these servers? Fill the pot with water. Draw out some and take it to the MC. What's difficult in that? That's the simplest job ever. He needed to convert water to wine, but he needed human vessels to do the filling with water and to do the taking to the MC. If you understand the way this covenant works, like I said, your life will be so beautiful. This is something I don't want you to miss. God is always looking for a man to carry out his operations on earth. That's how we started. God is always looking for a man to carry out his operations. If you look at Ezekiel 22 verse 30, Ezekiel 22 30, he said he, he sought for a man. He was looking for a man to stand in the gap. The question is, are you going to be that man? Or you want him to go and use the donkey to speak? We want him to go and use the stone to shout to Sana? Are you going to be the man that he can do his miraculous acts through? Are you going to be available? He needs your mouth to preach. And somebody will say, I've added severally. Why, why I don't go on evangelism? Because I don't know what to say. I don't know Bible quotation. I don't know everything. To, if they ask me a question, what will I say? A lot of questions on your mind. You don't know what to say. For God's sake, who asks you to say anything? Psalm 81 verse 10. He said, open your mouth. I will feel it. That's all. For God's sake, that's the simplest job of life. Please, can you try it where you are? Can you just open your mouth? What's difficult in that? <laughs> Open your mouth. That's all. I will feel it. I will, there are several things I've said that I never premeditated. I never, at times when I go back to my own messages and I listen to it, I'm shocked. I'm blessed. Because all I do is open my mouth. He feels it. He's the one talking to you now, not me. This part of the partnership I'm with him. He's the one who generated this podcast. He's the one who instructed me to go into this particular thing I'm doing. He's the, he's the one talking. All I need to do is to open my mouth. And he has always filled it to his faithfulness and to his glory alone. He needs your mouth to preach. He needs your hands for miracles. He needs you to lay hands so that the sick can be healed. You can't heal an ant. You can't heal nothing. He's the healer. But he needs your hands to perform that healing. He needs your eyes for spiritual visions. He wants to show you something that's going to happen. You need to see. Okay? He needs your ears for instruction. He wants to tell you something. Psalm 32 verse 8. Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you. I will teach you the way you shall go. And I will guide you with my eyes. He needs your ears. He needs your heart. He needs your eyes. He needs your hands. He needs your leg. Remember, it was the feet of the priest that divided Jordan. He needs you to walk. Remember the lepers? It was, the le- it was actually the legs of the lepers as they were walking. God magnified their feet. And the host of Syria ran away. And the prophecy of abundance in Samaria happened in less than 24 hours. He, what if those lepers had not moved? He needs your hands. He needs every part of your body it needs your voice in prayer it, you know some nations are yet to be saved because somebody's mouth has not opened in prayer if you pray some things are still happening in your family now because your mouth is closed if only you can open that mouth in prayer and it fills your mouth with the right prayers that problem would have been solved it needs you don't forget you need him more than he needs you 
But it's such a wonderful privilege to be in partnership with the creator of heaven and earth. Divinity. It's a wonderful privilege and it's so awesome. Now, as we begin to round off this particular session, the question will be, how can I sign up for this covenant of divine partnership? This is a very important aspect because there are steps to take. You don't just desire it and it begins to happen. No, there are steps to take. How can you sign up for this covenant of divine partnership? Number one, you must surrender your life to Jesus Christ. That's the first thing you have to do. You must surrender your life to Jesus Christ because Amos 3.3, Amos 3.3 says two people cannot work together except they be agreed. If you are not born again, you are not saved, you are still living in sin, you can't have any partnership. That's it. The only thing you can expect is judgment. So you must surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Seriously, not just church. You must talk to Jesus that, hey, I want to have a relationship with you. You must be saved. Your sins must be washed away. Number two, you must live a sanctified and consecrated life. You can't live anyhow. First Peter chapter 1, 15 and 16. First Peter chapter 1, 15 and 16 says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. The one you want to have covenant, the one you want to have partnership with is holy. Okay? He doesn't commit sin. He doesn't, he can't even stand sin. So you can't be living in sin and be in partnership with him. It's just like okay you you have a friend your friend smokes but every every time you perceive uh somebody smoking cigarette you are just you are not comfortable you are like maybe it's like choking you somehow maybe you are allergic something like that and that and your friend does that so how is that relationship going to work when every time you are visiting the only thing your friend does is to smoke you will choke that relationship cannot last so it's either somebody stops something, either he stops smoking or you stop going. Anyhow, but you must be in agreement. You must live a sanctified and holy life, consecrated life. You must be holy. You can't live carelessly. You can't lie anyhow. You can't begin to cheat anybody anyhow. You can't, you know, be involved in rebellion. You can't, you can't talk anyhow. You can't behave anyhow. You are in partnership with the Almighty God. You must be holy. You must be sanctified and you must be consecrated to him. Number three, you must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit is the director in the affairs of this partnership. He's the one generating the instructions. He's the one, you know, taking care of the files. He's the one leading, doing the direction. He's the one telling you where to go. He's the channel through which divinity operates in humanity. So you must receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit must be actively present in your life. Number four, you must fill your heart with the word of god you must fill your heart with his word because that's his main channel of communication everything god will still tell you now must be something he has mentioned in his word there's nothing god will tell you now that will negate what he has already said in his word you need to fill your heart with his word you know david said your word have i eaten him i may not sin against you and when i said open your mouth and god will fill it most times he even does that through the word he has put in your heart so when you read this word and you meditate on it when you come across questions when you come across situations that you don't even know what to do somehow supernaturally that word that you have meditated on will just jump back into your mouth and you say it and situations become taken care of so you must fill your heart with this word if all that's in your heart is news if all that is in your heart is sport if all that is in your house is just gossip is ever how, how one uh, how one how this one happened how what happened in your place of work if that's everything that's in your heart then you will, you will just remain on the level of humanity you can't really relate with divinity beyond politics beyond news beyond sports beyond every other thing that's going on on this planet you must understand heavenly news you must understand heavenly concepts and that is resident in the word of god you must fill your heart with the word of god number five you must become yielded you must become available for his use by asking him to create a divine partnership covenant account for you in heaven that's what you have to do you must become available for his use by asking him to do what to create a divine partnership covenant account for you in heaven and you begin to do whatsoever he asks you to do you must do your part moses and he needed to be lifted for the rest to be divided his partnership it's not god that is doing everything you must do one 
he will do another one it's only that the one he does is higher than the one you do so you must still do something you must be available for his use you must ask him to sign you up for this partnership and the way to do that is talking to him in prayer and you're going to be committing yourself that lord beginning from now i'm going to do whatever you ask me to do i'm going to do everything you ask me to do that's what the mother of jesus told the uh, the people in the uh, Cana of galilee in matthew i mean in john chapter 2 when in there to convert water to wine he said whatever he tells you to do do it whether it's stupid or not do it whether it makes sense or not do it whether you are used to it or not just do it fill water yes sir take it out yes sir your job is just to do whatever he asks you to do because he is the lord who is going to carry out what he has ordained and i want you to take note of this as far as god is concerned your availability matters to him more than your ability I take it again availability is more important to god than ability you can be very you can be a man of great abilities and god will still not use you but or if all you have is lord here i am send me if all you have is lord i'm available use me he will bombard you with such anointing with great power that when things begin to happen you begin to you will be shocked yourself and he will take all the glory so you must be available you must be available god needs somebody to pray at 2 a.m you should be somebody god will come and wake up and say my son rise up pray about this matter not that when it's coming you are saying "Ah, lord you know this episode this netflix episode is so sweet i have to finish it then god will go elsewhere or when it's coming around 2 a.m he's waking you up you are still snoring he says stand up and pray you say lord please i'm tired he will go elsewhere that's where that replacement comes in i pray the lord will not replace you in jesus name so you must be available you must be available he asked me to start this podcast and i became available by his grace and it is still happening now and if any i told you earlier on some people were already communicating about how god is blessing them that is that is a wonderful testimony of his own faithfulness because you if i'm not available he said do this podcast i said lord i'm busy then you will go and use somebody else and you will find a way of you know, replacing me. God forbid. So you must be available because your availability matters to him more than what your ability. He told, Jay, he told Jay Abraham in something in Genesis chapter 17. If you have time, you can read it. Genesis chapter 17. He said, I am the Lord Almighty, right? Walk before me and be perfect. He told him in verse 4 of chapter 17, As for me, my covenant is with you as for me my side is taken care of it depends on you if you live holy i will do what i said i would do if you don't i'm sorry i can't do anything as for me my covenant is with thee you walk before me and the perfect do your part that's very important and lastly to continue in the partnership you must learn to give him all the credit and all the glory this is the part that is very important your responsibility apart from being available is to make sure he gets all the credit the day you begin to drag credit and glory with god replacement factor will set in that's the way he operates he wants everybody to know that is the one who parted the race he wants everybody to know that is the one who divided jordan he wants everybody to know that is the one who took out the Israelites from the land of egypt don't ever say i am the one who did it when it's actually the one who did it don't ever take glory for what he did through you if he used you to heal somebody who had cancer and the person said praise god when pastor prayed for me my cancer disappeared hallelujah quickly say glory be to god return that don't go home and begin to look at yourself in the mirror as somebody who, who, who is now you know somebody who is now a cancer cancer cure somebody who cures cancer don't ever let it get into your head you must learn to give him all the glory and all the credit everybody must see that is the one doing it that's the only way that this partnership can continue if you don't it's going to be terminated i have several examples in scripture to confirm to you the only way you're going to keep him using you is to make sure every he keeps getting all the glory for everything he does what is the reward why are you in partnership what's your reward your reward is very simple whatever answers to god will begin to answer to you very simple everything god enjoys you enjoy every honor he enjoys you enjoy everything that answers to him they begin to answer to you he told moses in exodus chapter 7 verse 1 exodus 7 1 he said i have made thee a god to pharaoh god made moses a god to pharaoh partnership 
So when you are in partnership with God, you become a God over situations. Nothing is out of control anymore. You become a God over sickness. You become a God over affliction. You become a God over poverty. You become a God over all affairs of life. You can decree a thing and shall be established. You can tell a storm to stop and the storm will stop. You can tell sickness to stop and it will stop. Everything God enjoys, you enjoy. It begins to honor your decree. It begins to honor anything that comes out of your mouth. That is what you enjoy. The reward is you begin to get the God kind of results. And as a a result, you attract honor everywhere you go. I ask you, where will God go that they will not honor him? Everywhere God goes, he must attract honor because he's God. The same thing applies. Everywhere you go, people see God in you. They see the hand of God upon your life and they give you the honor they will give to God himself. So you begin to get God kind of results. And of course, you will make it to heaven because that's where he is. It's a spirit. It's in heaven. You are here. When you're in partnership, he will take you one day from where to where he is. That's what he did to Enoch. Enoch walked with God until he was no more. Why? God took him home. Say, okay, we we have finished the partnership on earth. Let's go and continue the partnership in heaven. So when you are in partnership with God, you can't end up in hell. You must be where he is. That is the way it works. So it's my prayer that God will give us understanding and God will give us the grace to sign up for this partnership and to enjoy is some is a is a major principle that can put your life on a very wonderful sale. And like I said earlier on, all these beautiful things they start with one thing, one assignment. You must surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And that's why as I close this episode, I would like to invite you if you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus Christ and uh, or maybe you surrendered, you went back to take it, you are backsliding this is the hour to come back to him because something beautiful is about to happen in your life by reason of this divine uh, partnership. So if you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, you're going to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. And that's why I need your salvation. Please come into my life today. Wash away all my sins and set me free from every form of bondage that sin has attracted into my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior today. Write my name in the book of life and help me to live for you from today onward. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Let us pray. My Father and my God, I thank you once again for what you have done. Thank you, Father, because as you have said i've opened my mouth and you have filled it and you have ministered to this your people thank you so much for the revelation of your word and thank you especially for this your children who are deciding to surrender their lives to you today so that they can sign up for this covenant of divine partnership lord we give you glory and i pray for them that you will forgive their sins you will write write their names in the book of life you will wash away all their transgressions you will even deliver them from the penalty of their sins in the name of jesus pray that the power to say no to temptation the grace to overcome all manners of satanic distraction may the lord release such grace upon you in the name of jesus and to all my listeners i pray for you everything the lord has taught you through this episode today they will the devil will not be able to snatch them away from your heart you'll be able to bear fruits in the name of jesus and as many of you who will be signing up for this covenant of divine partnership the ability and the grace to remain committed the grace to do your part may the lord release upon you in the name of jesus and in no time in no time sooner than you expect people shall begin to see god in your life and they shall begin to see the honor and the power and the glory of god resident and evident upon your life in the name of jesus and whenever the lord chooses to return he will take you home to be with himself in the mighty name of jesus father thank you for answering our prayers return all the glory to you in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's been a wonderful moment in God's presence and I'm so excited at, uh, about what he has taught us today. Now, if you said that prayer of salvation especially, congratulations. You, you're now born again. You've done the first part. And the power of Satan is broken over your life. power of sin is broken over your life. Now, to, now that you're saved, of course, you will need to learn more about Jesus. You don't just get saved and sit down. It's a new life. So you need to grow in his grace you need to go into the level of sanctification and consecration you need to learn more about him and that we are willing to work with you in this particular journey so if you will send us an email through info at grave.org 
info at gloem.org that's i-n-f-o at g-l-o-e-m dot o-r-g we'll be glad to send you um uh, welcome to God. Uh, welcome to God's family package. It's a material which will help you grow and remain steadfast in this new life. The material is written in such a way that it will guide you into the things that you now begin. Uh, you need to begin to do so that you can grow in the knowledge of our Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, it's also important that you begin to associate with a community of believers. Community, family is everything. You need a family of uh, believers to grow for support, for prayers, for fellowship, for knowledge sharing to ask your questions, to ask people to join you in prayer. You need a family. And that's why we will be inviting you to join other believers every Sunday for a one-hour Bible study and prayer meeting via Zoom app. We hold an online Bible study and prayer meeting every Sunday, 7 to 8 p.m. Mountain Time uh, via Zoom app. So you may need to download uh, Zoom app on your phone or, or your desktop or laptop and uh, check what 7 to 8 p.m. Mountain Time is in your own time zone and come online. And if you also visit our website, uh, www.gloem.org, www.gloem.org, right there, there's a banner on top, right from the home homepage. You can click on that banner. The banner will take you straight to the room where uh, we hold the, uh, the fellowship. So it's very important you take advantage of this uh, wonderful opportunity come join the family of god and it's online or anywhere you are any part of the world once there's internet you can actually be part of what god is doing every sunday 7 to 8 p.m mountain time and then right on that website also there are wonderful resources and materials that can help you grow there are wonderful materials when i mean wonderful i'm not flattering they are really wonderful they are great revelations that the lord has revealed that can help you grow and they uh, cause your spirit man to be robust and if you also like our Facebook page at gloem.org at gloem.org, uh, you'll be able to receive a daily meditation. We post daily there. You'll be able to keep yourself abreast of the happenings in the ministry. And you can be able to pick up daily doses of the Word of God every day, every day. That's why it's daily meditation. You pick it up, you meditate throughout the day, pick up the second day. And before you know it, you see your life getting transformed and people noticing that. It's very important to take advantage of these uh, wonderful opportunities. And the uh, Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. And lastly, I want to encourage you to also share this podcast with uh, your friends, family. Post it on your social media anywhere. There's no copyright on it. Let the word get out so that true horse in the, the head can be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as waters cover the sea. It's very, very important. And as you do that, the Lord will bless you mightily and cause his light to shine in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you so much for listening this week. We'll be back next week by God's grace for another glorious moment in his presence. That's if he has not returned. And uh, if he has returned, we we'll go and continue the fellowship in heaven. So till then, keep enjoying your freedom in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Bye.